Hey, what's up everyone? This is Josh. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on iOS design patterns. In this video, you'll learn about composition over inheritance. Now, strictly speaking, this isn't a design pattern, but rather a design principle. Well, what's the difference? A design principle is a general good advice guideline that's used by many design patterns. If you will, design patterns are characterized by design principles. Design by composition is one of the most central design principles, and it's followed by most design patterns. Design by composition refers to the ability to achieve polymorphic behavior and code reuse by composition rather than inheritance. Well, that's quite technical sounding, isn't it? I do say it needs more composition. What this means is that you should prefer to use other classes instead of subclassing to share behaviors. For example, in order to make authentication requests in the demo app, we could make network client subclass auth client. However, this can lead to many problems. For example, what if you want to use different types of authentication for different endpoints? Or we want to change this later on. The way to solve this is by having network client use the auth client instead of subclassing it. This is definitely better, but we can actually still improve this further. There's a related design principle to composition over inheritance, which is called the dependency inversion principle. This states that you should prefer to depend on abstractions instead of the tails. Essentially, this design principle asks, how can you handle changes? The solution is to depend on things that never change. To do this, you design your classes to depend on protocols instead of other concrete classes directly. This is especially important when it's likely the dependency will change in the future. For example, instead of having network client depend directly on auth client, you can make it depend on an auth token provider protocol, which defines exactly what the network client needs. This way, even if you need to completely change how auth client works in the future, you won't change the auth token provider and network client won't be impacted at all. Win. Let's see how to do this in the demo app. You'll start by creating the auth token provider protocol. Then you'll update network client to use auth token provider and write a new method to send a quote request. Lastly, you'll update product details view controller to use the network client. If you're starting from the demo starter, remember to open rwclean.xc workspace and not the Xcode proj file since we pulled in a dependency using CocoaPods in the challenge for the last video. We're going to build and run so that we can see what we'll be doing in this demo within the iPhone simulator. We'll navigate to the Home Services and then just select the first product. On the bottom, we see that there's this button for Make Reservation. No matter how many times we click this, it never does anything. This is because until now, we haven't been able to implement this functionality. It requires making an authenticated network request. By having the network client use auth client via composition, this becomes easy to do. Let's switch back to the Xcode workspace and see how to do it. We'll first add a new group for protocols inside this authentication group. We'll add a new file called authtokenprovider.swift to this group. and then define the protocol within it. I'm just going to go ahead and add all the details and we'll explain afterwards what we're doing.
The network client will use this protocol in order to get something that can provide auth tokens to it. Network client doesn't actually care where it gets the auth tokens, just that it's able to. The auth client already has a method with this exact same signature here. Invalidate auth token, however, is new. Essentially, whenever the network client gets an auth token, it will use it to set the authentication headers on a request. It's possible that the remote endpoint may actually return an HTTP status code indicating that the authentication headers are invalid or perhaps expired. In that case, we need a mechanism for network client to actually indicate to the auth token provider that it needs to discard its existing auth token and provide a new one upon request. That's what this invalidate auth token method will do. Okay, armed with this knowledge, we're ready to make auth client conform to this protocol. The only thing we need to do is implement this invalidate auth token method. Here, we simply set the existing auth tuple to nil. The next time that the request auth token method is called, it will go through the entire process of getting a new auth tuple. We'll next update network client to use auth token provider. To start, we'll add a property for the auth token provider. This will then need to be set within both the shared instance and also the designated initializer. For simplicity, we'll simply grab the shared instance on the auth client and inject that into the network client here. Next, you want to open Finder to wherever you downloaded the files for this video. And you should see that there's this resources group. To save you a lot of typing, you'll find several files within this. First, we're going to just drag and drop the quote request.swift over into cleaning services. And make sure copy items if need is, is checked. And this is actually a model. Next, let's go ahead and move in this quote request view controller into the controllers. Quote request table view cell into views. And then we're actually going to replace this cleaning services storyboard. So we'll select it and then press delete and move to trash. We'll drag in this new cleaning services.storyboard. Lastly, we'll need this in a second. First, however, let's take a look at some of the files we've just pulled in. First off is this quote request. This is a simple model which represents a quote. So whenever the user actually taps on that make reservation button, what we want to do is actually call a method on network client to send a quote request. It's not really too important what this actually is other than it's some piece of information we're actually exchanging with the server. In network client, we next actually want to add a method to do just that, send the quote request. This is where this network client plus send quote request comes in. Go ahead and open this. And you'll see there's this rather long method here. We're going to just copy all of this here and paste it at the very end of our existing network client.
Now, let's take a look at what we're actually doing here. First, the parameters for this take a product. Well, this is the product that we're actually interested in getting a quote request for. And then, of course, since this is an asynchronous callback, we have success and failure closures. We want to ensure that these closures are actually called on the main queue. To do this, we simply create success and failure wrapper closures, which just dispatch to the main queue and call the relevant closure. Here is where things get interesting. This is where we start actually leveraging the power of composition. We call into the auth client, which, as you remember, is actually this auth token provider. And we ask it to request an auth token. If this is successful, we actually will get back a token user tuple. We only care about the token, however, so we'll just discard the user. From this, we can actually build the URL for the quote request based on the product identifier that was passed in. And then we can use the token to set the authentication headers. This is great. This gives us an easy means to request from the auth client, which will take care of everything having to do with vending tokens for us. And all we care about in the network client is the networking logic related to whatever we're trying to do. So in this case, we just have networking logic related to getting the quote requests sent over. Below this, this is all just logic related to actually parsing back the response, which is actually the quote request that is generated. If things go awry, of course, we also handle this gracefully and generate a network error, either from an error, such as if the request timed out, or if the HTTP status code isn't actually within the 200 to 300 range, we will also see that the uh, status code is not the is success HTTP status code, and that will be handled as well here. And then of course, this request auth token, it only has one case that any sort of auth related failure is leaked through, and that's if the user explicitly cancels the process. So in this case, we simply log this and we'll just pass a network error for user canceled, and whoever calls into this method will be responsible for gracefully handling that. Most of the time, we expect that they should just silently fail or dismiss the load. Speaking of callers for this method, we actually want to go over now to the product details view controller and update it so that whenever the make reservation button is pressed, it actually calls into this network client dot send quote request. First, we'll add a network client as a new injected property at the top here. We're just going to simply grab the shared instance. In your own applications, you may actually want to put a protocol in between this if you want to swap it out for perhaps a mock during testing, or you might even want to use different endpoints at time. These aren't actually the case here for the demo app. We aren't going to be writing any unit tests, and we're only going to be using this one network client, so it is appropriate for us to just grab the shared instance off the network client like we're doing here. Now we can actually write this make reservation pressed IB action. Okay, if we command and left click on this show loading HUD method, we'll see that this is actually added via this UI view controller plus loading HUD extension, which is part of our theme grouping. All it does is simply displays a view that has a loading 
indicator within the view controllers view just centered on the screen essentially likewise the dismiss loading HUD just dismisses the loading HUD okay let's go back now we actually don't care so much about the quote request for this make reservation all we care about is that was it successful or was it actually failed if it's successful we're going to just perform a segue to the show quotes. If not, we'll just, for now, just print an error message. In a real application, you'd actually want to do something to handle this, but this is good enough for our purposes. Now, this show quotes is new. Remember when we replaced this cleaning services storyboard? Let's see what that's about. So here's the product details view controller scene. And then this is the new segue. As we can see, it has this show quotes identifier. And this is going to this new scene for quote requests view controller. If we go over to the quote requests view controller, we'll see that a lot of this actually isn't written yet. This is going to be part of the challenge that you'll be doing. For now, we just want to verify that we can actually get to this quote request view controller. So let's go ahead and build and run the app. Okay, and let's press this request quote button here. Great. So we actually did get pushed to this quotes screen. This is exactly what we actually wanted to see here. Within the challenge, you're going to add another networking method to actually get the quote requests, which will be another authenticated method. This way, you actually get practice using the composition of calling into the auth client, getting the auth token back, and using it. And with that, that's it for the demo. Nice job working through the demo. In the challenge, you'll add another authenticated method for getting quote requests and update quote requests view controller to use it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.